This video was made possible thanks to Ovo Energy. We're super excited to collaborate with Ovo because, like us, they think it's incredibly important that everyone understands what's happening at the moment, why your energy bills are likely to rise and what can be done about it, as well as Ovo actively pushing the government to do more in order to protect all households. You can find out more about that at the end of this video. Anyway. You might have noticed politicians and journalists talking a lot about the impending energy crisis. As the money-saving expert Martin Lewis put it, there will be a seismic hit on energy bills. Yeah. In fact, with 28 energy companies collapsing last year alone, you could have even been impacted yourself. So let's get into what's been happening. And to do that, we're going to split this video into three parts. Firstly, we're going to look at how rising global energy prices have impacted the UK's energy sector. Secondly, we're going to look at how this affects UK consumers and explain why they should expect a massive hike in their energy prices come April. Then third and finally, we're going to be looking at a variety of things that other European states have done to soften the impact on their consumers and whether the UK government should follow suit. Anyway, on to the first part of the video. Rising energy prices and its impact on the UK energy sector. Now, we've done a video on this topic before, so if you want to know more about this issue generally, you can go and watch that. But the TLDR is that there's a whole load of factors behind this. A global post-pandemic spike in demand, a shortfall in Russian gas supplies, and the UK's lack of energy storage, to name just a few. And combined with other factors, these have forced wholesale energy prices up by a staggering 900%. Now, to understand quite how much energy prices have gone up, and some of the factors behind it, you need to understand two new concepts, hedging and the spot market. Buying energy in advance is known as hedging, and it essentially involves energy companies agreeing to pay a supplier some fixed amount for energy in the future. Buying energy on the spot market, on the other hand, involves buying energy just 24 hours in advance, where prices are susceptible to market volatility. Anyway, now you know the difference between hedging and buying on the spot market. Hopefully you'll be able to understand how much more expensive wholesale energy has become and how hedging can protect customers from volatility. According to the latest Ofgem data published in November 30th, hedged prices have more than doubled over the last year, going from about £50 per megawatt hour of electricity to about 100 in October and about 50p per therm of gas to over a pound in the same time frame. But spot market prices have fared even worse. By monthly average, electricity prices have increased by some 900% to a high of £227 in September, while gas prices on the stock market rose by an astonishing 1,700%. And these monthly averages also disguise quite how insane prices have been. For example, electricity prices went as high as £411 per megawatt hour on December 16th, and gas prices jumped to 450 pence per therm on December 21st. Anyway, this should help you understand why hedging is financially sensible. It protects the energy supplier and its customers from market volatility and sky-high spot market prices. Now, so far, UK customers have been protected from all of these price jumps by the UK's energy price cap. The UK is the only country in Europe with a household price cap, and it essentially limits how much energy companies can charge customers per unit. This rate changes every six months, once in April and once in October. But importantly, the price cap is decided two months in advance, so in February and August, and they use the wholesale prices observed over the previous six months when making their calculation. Because energy prices weren't sky high between February and August 2021, the energy price cap for this winter currently assumes a wholesale energy price of £70 per megawatt hour of electricity and 63 pence per therm of gas. However, given that wholesale prices are now significantly higher than they were a year ago, some UK energy companies are struggling to even break even. After all, they're paying a lot more for the energy they purchase, but they can't pass the costs on to their customers thanks to the energy price cap. 
This is why a record 28 energy companies, mostly those who failed to hedge sufficiently or had limited or even negative cash reserves, have been going bust over the last few months. This is an important point. In many cases, the companies that have gone bust have done so because of financial irresponsibility. Prudent energy companies usually hedge for the whole price cap period. They know how much they're allowed to charge their customers for those six months and therefore hedge accordingly. In some cases, these energy companies rely too heavily on the spot market, trying to turn a quick profit without properly assessing the risk, while others just genuinely began struggling to cope as they had to sell energy for less than they paid for it. UK customers have been shielded from this for the time being, but unfortunately for them, these low prices won't last. And that's what this second part of the video is about, the upcoming changes to the price cap. Now, no one knows for sure how much the new price cap is going to be, but Investec estimated that it could go as high as £2,000 per household. For context, that's a 56% rise from the current cap of £1,277, and basically double the £1,138 it was a year ago. That's clearly a huge increase for households up and down the country. But it's important to note that this price increase won't just be to cover the increased costs of wholesale energy. No, UK customers will also be covering another thing. The so-called supplier of last resort levy claims. That's a lot of jargon, but stay with me. Essentially, when energy company X goes bankrupt, Ofgem starts the supplier of last resort process and asks other energy companies, let's call them A, B, and C, to consider taking on X's customers. A, B, and C will each estimate how much it will cost them to take on those customers, and whoever bids the lowest gets the customers. Now, let's imagine that C gets the customers. Ofgem then pays C whatever it costs them to take on X's customers, in the form of a levy claim the cost of which ultimately gets passed back to the consumers via increases in the next price cap. Now, because so many companies have gone bankrupt recently, and because energy prices are so high, the total amount for all of the levy claims comes to £1.8 billion, which translates to about a £70 rise per household. It's worth noting that there's one exception here. Bulb. The failed supplier was considered too big for any other to take on its customers, so it skipped the competitive process and went straight into special administration. This follows exactly the same principle, except it's the government rather than a new supplier running it. And to make this possible, the Treasury have currently put aside another £1.8 billion in order to continue running Bulb, a bill which energy customers could ultimately end up paying regardless of who's being paid to take them on. All of this essentially means that UK energy customers are paying more because, in many cases, energy companies decided not to hedge appropriately. The point we're making is that UK customers aren't just covering the increased cost of wholesale energy, they're also going to have to cover the costs associated with these bankrupt companies, even those who acted recklessly. To make things worse, this massive and seemingly unfair price hike comes at a time when inflation is running at a decade-long high of 5.1%, and the tax burden is the highest it's been in over 50 years. Which leads us nicely onto the third and final part of the video. What should the government do about it? Well, they could take inspiration from their European neighbours. The Netherlands are temporarily reducing energy taxes, which is expected to reduce the average Dutch tax bill by €400 Euros per household. France has given out €100 Euro payments to those earning less than €2,000 a month, and Spain is currently working out a windfall tax on energy companies, which would then be redirected back to consumers. Across the aisle back at home, Labour have recommended that the government scrap VAT on domestic energy consumption, which is currently at 5%, and is actually something that Boris Johnson endorsed back in 2016 during the Brexit campaign. Not only that, but members of his own party have also backed the VAT cut, with a number of senior party members telling The Guardian that the current measures were doing nothing to help the majority of their constituents, and as such, their mailbags were filling with concerns from across the country. 
despite the beginnings of some rare cross-party consensus, the government has done nothing yet even though the new price cap is expected to be double what it was a year ago, essentially pushing the costs back onto households. As a final thing, if you do live in the UK and are worried about the impact of the new price cap will have on your household finances, OVO have published a guide to saving energy and money on their website, covering everything from insulation to energy efficiency. We know it's not quite a hundred euro check from the government, lucky French, but at least it's something. Anyway, what do you think? Should the energy price cap be increased? Is it fair that consumers are paying to cover the cost of collapsing companies? Comment your thoughts down below. As I mentioned at the start, this video is brought to you by Ovo Energy. They're not only one of the UK's largest energy companies, but they're fighting passionately on this issue. They're aware that this energy situation will hit all UK energy customers, and they strongly believe that they cannot just wait for this to happen. OVO thinks that policymakers need to act and protect consumers regardless of their supplier. If you agree or want to find out more, you can learn more about OVO and their stance on this issue on their website. It's linked in the description. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link is in the description.